All right. Okay, you guys. So we are going to be taking a look at the games played today in the um, uh, eSports uh, Cup held in Oslo. It's an uh, online event, but being played in person, of course, with players at their computers. All right, so let's take a look at the games. So today, Magnus Carlsen played against none other than Laquang Lam, the very strong grandmaster from the United States of America. Um, and without further ado, let's jump right in. All right, so we get Knight of Three played here, D5. E3 is played. Okay, so Magnus decides that his name is Magnus, or Magnus decides that his name is Hikaru Nakamura. He decides to play Knight F3 in E3. This is, of course, a Hikaru specialty. He likes to play it a lot online, including in the Rapid Chess Championship held today on chess.com. All right, so we get E3. Knight to F6 is played here. C4, E6, Knight C3, Bishop E7, B3. Okay, looks very familiar to everybody who's watched my stream before. Castles, Bishop B2, C5, D4. Now, um, in this position, I believe that white normally takes on d5. Um, and if knight takes d5 here, I believe there's a line with, I, I think, I don't remember if it's queen c2 in h4, but it's very, very aggressive here. Um, and if e takes d5, or sorry, if e takes d5, d4, I feel like vaguely there was some game between Weasley, or not Weasley, sorry, between Wesley So, um, and Ali Reza Fruja played some time back, um, in this variation, also in one of the online tournaments. So, at any rate, Magnus plays it differently, goes d4, takes, takes dc4 bishop takes c4 bishop d7 okay looks normal so far castles knight to c6 knight f3 a6 queen b1 interesting choice by magnus i'm guessing the idea here is that he he kind of follows this other line so in this line that we had here the idea behind queen c2 is to go h4 knight g5 and, and use the two diags so in the game by going queen to b1 it's the same concept he wants knight g5 he, he really wants to use these two diags maybe knight e4 maybe even rook d1 sorry so he, he wants the two diags uh, he wants knight e4 here very aggressive try by the way uh maybe even rook d1 so i like the setup so we get b5 played here uh bishop to e2 pawn to h6 is played and now we get <laughs> to d1 uh ron weasley yes ron, ron weasley by the way can i be honest that is my um i have nicknames for everybody and um and yeah so wesley when, when i talk about wesley with like my trainer or something i always call him uh, i call i call him ronald weasley so Anyway, just one little bit of a, one of the little inside jokes that my, my trainer and I have. Um, okay, so anyway, we get rook to d1, queen to b6 played here by, by, um, by Laquan, pawn to a4. Interesting choice by Magnus. Now he tries to open up the queen side also, like it takes maybe a knight a4. Now there are problems on, on all sides. There's a problem um, on the diax, there's a problem on the queen side. Very, very deep concept, but very, very nice for, uh, for, for white here. So b4 is played, knight to e4, knight d5, bishop to c4, rook d8. Okay, I mean, looks like white is better here. I don't know how much better white is, but you have the two diagonals. You, you have pretty good map control here in the center. Um, and so I assume Magnus is clearly better. So what went wrong exactly? So we get takes, takes, rook d5. Now this, I guess this is correct, um, but it feels like somehow there should be a bigger way to build the pressure. And actually, computer says... Yes, computer, of course, says you play h3, obviously. I mean, rook d2 feels like a good move as well. But it feels like there's probably a way to build more pressure versus uh, taking the extra pawn here. Because even though white is better, black now has the two bishops and very obvious ideas like putting pressure on the pawn on b3. So we get knight e to d2 played here. Queen to c5. Queen to d1 played by Magnus. Queen d5, rook c1. Okay, white's up a pawn here, but now after... Oh, I thought knight a5 was a move, but I guess knight a5, he didn't like knight d4. Maybe white's a little bit better, but still, it feels like the advantage is kind of gone. Instead, he plays bishop g4, queen c2, takes, takes knight a5, knight d4, looks amazing. Bishop f6, uh, rook to b1, takes, takes, knight c6, rook d1. Okay, Magnus is, wait, isn't Magnus just up a pawn here and completely winning? Okay, we get knight a5, rook d3 here, h3, rook c8, queen d1. Okay, queen and rook are very good. They guard the pawn on b3. You've got a wooden shield in the middle of the board as well. Um, so, okay. Rook c1, takes, takes. Queen c8, queen f8, looks good. f6, queen b4, takes. Bishop c3, knight c1, king h2. Oh! Oh, dear. Oh, 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 dear. Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. It's like, oh, my oh my um <laughs> i was like i was like okay i mean he obviously missed knight two with the fork uh but i think queen d4 queen c3 queen e4 is still a draw because king g8 queen e8 king h7 queen e4 is a draw and if you play you play g6 there's queen e7 and then you just check forever and it's a draw 
Um, Queen e4 is not, um, <laughs> it's not the right move. <laughs> oh my. Um, wow. So, okay. So Magnus goes Queen e4. And of course, after Queen takes e4, he resigns the game. So he loses the first game of the mini match. What, what, a what a way to lose. Um, <laughs> okay. So Magnus down one zero. So let's move to game two. So Magnus obviously starts off game two with the black pieces. So we get, we get D four. D5, C4, E6. Okay, all pretty normal so far. Knight F3, C6. So Magnus plays the triangle. We need more triangle. Um, or the or a mini pyramid as well. But the triangle setup is something that is considered pretty solid even now in this day and age. So we get bishop G5. Bishop E7 takes Queen E7, E3, Knight F6. All pretty normal so far. White's maybe slightly better here, because much like in the French, black is a bad white square bishop. It's blocked in by all these pawns. Um Knight c3, castles, rook c1, rook d8, okay, queen c2, takes c5, castles, takes, bishop d7, logical move. You don't go knight c6 here, because after knight c6, I take, and now you end up in a situation where you have an isolated pawn. As an example, something like this, followed by knight c5, um, and white can take the center, even bishop f3, and this pawn is just super, super soft on c6, and so you don't really want to go into that. So Magnus correctly plays bishop d7, and now knight c6, because if I trade... Not only do I keep my pawn structure intact, I now have a great op targeting the pawn on g2. So knight c6, knight f3 is played here. We get bishop e8, h3, rook c8. So white maybe has a touch more space here. There's a little bit more map control on the queen side. But objectively, I think that the black should be fine. So we get a3, h6. Okay, some waiting moves. Trade, bishop d3, queen d6, rook d1. <clears throat> You don't play something like knight e5 because then you walk into the fossil bishop h7 check and now i collect your queen on d6 here that would be a very big accident so instead we get queen c7 no fossil here with bishop h7 because after takes and you take on d8 i just recapture the rook and you haven't discovered anything you've just lost your priest all right so magnus or not magnus sorry laquan plays knight e4 here trade rook d1 queen d1 knight e7 queen c2 and probably we just got a draw, right? Probably a simplification here. Uh, e5, f6. Um, and yeah, just not a very exciting position here. Uh, eventually, everything gets clogged up like a toilet and nothing either side can do. Very boring game that ends in a draw. Not really all that exciting. So second game ends in a draw. Okay, so Laquang still leading, um, still leading one and a half half. And now we go to the third game between Magnus with the white pieces and Laquan with the black pieces. So we get d4, knight f6, c4, e6, knight f3, d5. Okay, so Magnus chooses to play the Catalan defense, great defense in honor of those separatists in Spain. Um, bishop to b4 check is played, bishop d2, and Laquan plays a5 here. So we got bishop g2 and castles. Now it's worth noting d takes c4 is still a very principled line. It was played in the world championship match between Vessel and Topolov and Vladimir Kramnik all the way back in, I want to say, 2009 maybe or 8, whenever it was a long time ago. But instead, Laquan decides to castle here. So he decides to castle. We get pawn to a3 being played. Actually, give me one second. I need to close my blinds. So we get pawn to a3 being played here. Bishop to e7. All pretty normal. Queen c2, knight bd7, bishop f4. Not going to go too deep into the weeds of these openings, because again, this is all pretty standard theory. Castle, and now we get a4. Now, I haven't looked at this in a long time, but I could have sworn that at some point, black has to go b6 with bishop a6 or bishop b7. For example, say I just play a waiting move. If you get bishop a6 here, you have this, all these threats on this long diagonal from a6 to f1. Um, so I'm pretty sure b6 is the right move. Of course, white can also trade and maybe go rook c1 and try to play on the c file, but again... I feel like after bishop a6 and rook c8, black should be fine here. So it's an interesting choice to not actually take instead, instead or not take, sorry, but to not go b6. Instead, a4 is play, which I really don't like because this now creates a permanent weakness, which can be targeted by the queen on c2 and the knight on c3. Knight c3 is played here, queen a5, pawn to e4. Nice central thrust by Magnus here, trying to take even more map control. And you can kind of tell that black really is struggling. He's very cramped here, doesn't have enough space in the center of the board. And so I think white is definitely better here. So we get pawn takes pawn, rook a d1 played by Magnus. Interesting choice, by the way. I thought that knight d2 made a little bit more sense. Maybe knight d2 and a b5, something like d5 just to smash the center. 
Although apparently computer hates it as we see from the bar, but something like that seems a little bit more to the point kind of, but rookie D one is also very logical. Again, with all this control to center, you can go like rookie one, maybe D five, maybe E five somewhere as well. Oh, whoa, thank you to Chess Comp PL for the raid with 160. Thank you so much to Chess Comp PL. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Um, so yeah, so this makes some sense here. Instead, we get um, Rook AD1, Rook E8, Rook FE1, Knight F8. Now Magnus goes Knight E5. Nice move. Of course, the point behind Knight F8 here for Laquang is that the Bishop and the Rook are very cramped here. So Laquang wants me to put the Knight on G6, maybe develop the Bishop. Also long term, maybe let me just make a couple of random moves. So you get some position like this, maybe even E5 to open up the scope for the Bishop down the road. And now, of course, the Knight on G6 supports the, uh, supports the pawn in E5 as well. So instead, we got Knight E5 here. Queen to a6 played by Laquang to guard his extra pawn here. Now, again, white would love to play d5, but if you go d5 again, you kind of open up the diagonal for the light square bishop, which is why Magnus does not do that. Instead, he plays this move h4, trying to maybe go g4, g5, maybe go g4, h5, but again, taking even further map control, taking even more, more of the map with the idea of g4, g5. So we get knight g6 played here, takes, takes. Bishop g5 played by Magnus, bishop f8, e5, knight e5. And now knight e4 and yeah now white's white's actually probably close to winning because of this pawn structure on the king's side white is just going to go queen e2 h5 takes and at some point the knife is going to g5 and black won't be able to kick it out because for example let me go back let's say we get some position um i'm just gonna make a random move you get some position like this well what's what's a better example i'm trying to think of what a good example is um what's a good example so let's say we get some position. I'm just actually going to make some moves here. Takes, takes, something like this. Um, you know, at some point with the pawns on um, on g7 and h7, black can always play h6. So, so just to illustrate the point here, say we get some position um, <clears throat> uh, like this, for example. What? Uh, it, disre disregard the computer evaluation, of course, but if you get a knight to g5 here, black can always play h6 to kick the knight out of town. And now you no longer have these big attacks on the king's side. Whereas in the game, because of the structure of the pawns, there's a very serious issue. So if I just make some waiting moves just to show you guys the difference, I can always just pop the knight to g5, and you no longer have h6 to kick the knight. If you go f6 after takes, takes, there's probably something like knight e4 and queen g4, h5, maybe even something like queen c2. But the pawns are very, very brittle here, which is why once black gets these double pawns on g6, it's really, really bad. Really bad. So, so we get b5 played here, h5, takes, and now queen e2 by Magnus again lot of problems i think if you go g6 here maybe white even just goes g4 maybe knight f6 here to try and get some kind of lobster pincer maybe you can take with a pawn and go for a lolly with with bishop h6 queen h6 queen g7 at some point so a lot of mating patterns exist for white also it's worth noting when we look at this position black is currently up two pawns but a lot of his pieces are underdeveloped bishop on f8 not developed bishop on c8 not developed rook on e8 not doing anything on a closed closed lane rook on e8 also on a closed lane queen on a6 all of these pieces are completely out of place so even though black has two extra pawns white has a lot of active pieces the queen is active the bishop and knight are active and white is just crashing through on the king side where the black monarch is placed so we get g6 g4 is played oh so this is actually the game okay h4 bishop h4 b4 black's desperately trying to play c3 at some point and open up this diagonal so you get queen f3 takes knight f6 again magnus going for the classic lobster pincer here with bishop f6 followed by queen h3 and queen to h8 checkmate it's also of course a right triangle as well so now we get um now we get this position um after a takes b2 queen to h3 is played um and now we get bishop g7 bishop to e4 played uh by magnus which is apparently not the best move um not sure what oh maybe it is just winning I'm not sure very weird the bar just went way up and way down uh but not not really sure why anyway we get queen to b5 played here by um play, played by by Laquang g5 and of course very simple idea Magnus wants to go king g2 rook h1 create the lobster pincer in the corner uh, in the corner of the board queen b3 queen h4 there should be seven and now king g2 just setting up this beautiful rook h1 idea c5 d5 e takes d5 and now rook h1 and white is simply just checkmating for example if you take on f6 after pawn takes there's just checkmate on h8 you can you can resist for one move with queen h3 but again checkmate at the end of the game um and if you don't take 
I mean, you could go queen h3 first, but we'll disregard it. Let's say you play d4. White just plays queen to h8 check. Bishop takes h8. Rook takes h8. And of course, it's a classic lobster pincer checkmate. Great term that was coined by the famous chess player and professional streamer Felix Longjaw. Okay, so very, very nice game here played by um, played by Magnus after rook h1 to end the game on the spot here. Really, really nice stuff to see. Just a complete dominating game, crushing, showing again that piece activity, active pieces, more important than a couple of pawns. So very nice win in the third game for Magnus. And now let me let me find the fourth game. Give me one second. Um, one second. Let's let's fourth game. Here we go. Okay, and so now for the fourth and final game, we have Laquan playing with the white pieces against Magnus. Match tied one and a half, one and a half. So the game starts out with pawn to d4. Pawn to e6 played by Magnus, offering Laquang the chance to go into the French opening with pawn to e4 on move two. Now, Laquang is, Laquang is a player who's uh, almost predominantly always plays d4 and c4, so he doesn't take the bait from Magnus. So, as you know what, I, I respect the French people too much. I can't, I can't go into this opening. So he plays c4. Now, Magnus plays c5. Interesting. Um, so he gets c5. So Magnus chooses to play the Benoni. Um, which is not an opening that he normally plays, takes d6, e4, g6 here. Um, very surprising by Magnus. I'm guessing he really wanted to win this game. As everybody knows, this is a very famous opening where black gets a structure c5 and d6 versus e4 and d5. We call it the Ben Oni. Now, to, to give you guys an example, it's considered very dubious the Grandmaster level, and even the name itself uh, says a lot about the opening. Ben Oni, I believe it's in Yiddish, uh, means son of sorrow. So it's a very sad opening. And there's a reason that it's called that because obviously when you play it, you're sad, you're in pain, and you expect to lose the game of chess. So we get knight c3 played here. Bishop g7, bishop d3. Now again, many ways white can set this up. Bishop f4 is another way. Uh, knight f3, h3. Many different setups for white. Bishop d3, pawn to a6. Of course, white goes a4. You don't want to give black too much map control on the queen side of the board because if black is able to put the pawns here on a6, b5, c5, d6, their idea is like b4, maybe c4, even knight f6, and there's pressure on the center of the board because black can attack the bishop. Um, black can attack both the bishop and the knight on d3 and c3 here. So a4 is played by white. Now we get knight f6 played by Magnus. Laquang plays h3, knight bd7. Now I think Magnus played this against... Um, Maybe against Hans Niemann, the famous American Grandmaster in a previous event, or something very similar to this, with knight bd7, knight f3, and now he goes knight h5. Now, one thing that's actually kind of interesting about this is that there was a period in time, I believe it was in 2004 to 2005, when I was playing the Ben Oni. I played it on uh, the United States Chess Championship in a famous last round game against Alexander Onishuk. Um, I also played it more recently around 2008, 2009 against players like Rustam Kasimjanov. And I remember that there were many lines like this where you could play knight h5, whether it's with knight bd7, whether it's with castles. But if white actually calls your bluff and plays g4 and takes the space, uh, takes the map control on the king's side, then it's generally not considered very good for black. So g4 is played here by Laquang. We got knight hf6, bishop to f4, targeting the pawn on d6. Queen to e7 is played here, and now Laquang castles to his credit, which is a very good move. Obviously, you could get scared. You see your pawns on h3 and g4. You think, well, you know, if black goes h5, you know, there's problems on the light square diagonal. The op is really good. I can go knight e5 to sort of close the center. But objectively, white is doing very well. So here, Laquang plays king h2. Logical move. Gets out of the checks on the g lane. He also protects the pawn in h3 against threats like the bishop capturing the pawn. Castles is played here by Magnus. Now we get rook g1. Idea behind rook g1 is very simple. Laquang kind of wants to stop black from playing f6, ripping open this f lane. Again, if you get some random move, like let's just say a5, f6, once this f lane opens up, black is probably completely winning here, and you're in really bad shape. So the idea behind rook g1 is a very sort of prophylactic move. The idea is you basically want to um, talk black out of playing f6, because then with the rook on the g lane, there's a weak pawn on g6. Maybe you can attack towards the bishop on g7, and the king on g8 as well. So now we get f6, which is played anyway by El Magneto. Computer apparently says 95, which is much better for black here now. My guess is that the reason it says is because after knight h4, yeah, I guess you can just go bishop d7 at some point you play f6 and you rip open the f lane, but kind of dank. And in a rapid game or blitz game, I don't know how realistic, realistic it is to expect Magnus to define this. So instead he plays f6, which is of course very thematic, knight to h4. Now he goes knight to e5. And what is the difference here? I mean, I guess the difference actually now that I look at this is that if we go back to this position, 
um everything kind of becomes forced here whereas in this position after knight e5 knight h4 bishop d7 you can still take your time you can go you know get your afternoon tea come back get ready and prepare to play f6 at some point but you don't have to do it immediately whereas Magnus basically does it right away and there's sort of no going back from it as as Levon Aroni the famous Armenian chess player once said pawns do not once you move to pawn they can never go backwards so you really do have to contemplate such decisions um with very you know with you know you have to be very very serious and and paying a lot of attention so anyway we get f6 knight h4 knight e5 here bishop e5 pawn takes now we get knight g6 rook f2 king g3 played by uh played by laquang idea to create a double attack you attack the rook on f2 and the queen on e7 at the same time so now we get queen f7 dodging the attack from the from the puka also guarding the rook on f2 queen takes h5 played by laquang rook to f4 played by magnus big mistake apparently here computer says you can play knight takes g5 because if white takes with the queen you have check and then checkmate on h3 great op and great op and queen battery combination um and if 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 white goes something like knight e7 check after takes takes i guess you just eat the juicer create the fork on h3 and after like king e3 takes takes i'm guessing computer says that after um after like queen f7 black is very marginally better but even though black is up a pawn in this position here after something like a5 maybe bishop e2 bishop h5 I'm not sure how much better black truly is and Magnus probably assesses being very slightly better but nothing special which is why he chooses not to do this um instead he plays rook f4 but now after bishop to e2 black is just in a lot of trouble you don't have any of these knight g5 ideas anymore because now the bishop on e2, e2 prevents any rook f3 check and you're also kind of stuck your rook can't really go anywhere if you go to f2 now I go rook af1 and even though it looks like the king is open here the knight guards f4 square so you have to trade and now white controls the f lane there's great queen great knight bishop g4 white is completely winning here so here we get knight to f8 played by magnus laquang snaps the rook on f4 pawn takes king to h2 and now magnus goes knight g6 the idea behind this again is that there's still are black can still get maybe a bind on the dark squares so like bishop e5 maybe even knight e5 and some kind of f3 so if white can't really break through with this dark square control and maybe even a wooden shield here black probably has a little bit of counterplay so you get rook af1 b5 played by magnus which i also don't really like although i guess the idea is here magnus thought you know what i'm going to open up the a lane for my rook because if we look at this position the rook is behind the pawns to me I, it seems like you should probably go bishop d7 and rook f8 or rook e8 versus trying to sacrifice more material with b5 now here laquang plays a move that i really like which is bishop g4 choosing not to grab not to open the a lane for the black rook so he goes bishop g4 takes queen g4 and now after b4 knight d1 and the problem for black is even though black has a grip on the dark squares white can sort of play around it by playing on the light squares very specifically b3 to, to stop any pawn advance on the queen side and then also moves like queen f5 or queen e6 where black does not have any control so you get rookie eight now queen to f5 played by laquang here you get bishop to d4 rook to g4 played c4 last gas from magnus trying to use the pawn side majority of the three versus two to make a new queen but it's too little too late so we get h4 queen h7 maybe it's not actually maybe it's not I, as i look at this a little bit more and i don't just simply look at this uh just assuming that white's better because of the, the end result um it feels like this is actually kind of messy here because now your queen is kind of stuck your rook isn't doing anything you don't get to push the pawn and black just has a very simple idea like c3 c2 so we get king h3 bishop to e5 is played by magnus sort of creating the classic wooden shield you guard everything on the dark squares. you also create the bind so rook f2 rook f8 check king g7 rook c2 and now apparently this is the mistake here if he had gone king h8 after rook c2 c c sorry black goes c3 and i don't really know what the difference is but i'm just going to assume that somehow the queen has access to the seventh rank whereas in the game after king g7 rook c2 your king is in the way of the queen moving so that's probably the reason that king h8 is better but again at the same time rook h8 is also a very logical idea to put pressure on the pawn in h4 so you get c3 you get pawn takes pawn 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 to b3 now rook to b2 magnus goes king h8 now apparently here yes of course according to the computer the drawing move the best move in the position here is to play queen to h8 and after rook takes b3 rook f7 
Oh, you're completely fine because you have um, you have this idea of rookie seven, and the the white the white queen is just stuck here. Oh, what an oh, I hate computers. Wow, because basically, no matter what your move is, you can't move the rook because you get checkmated, of course. So you have to play something like rook b6. But now I go rook e7. Queen has no squares, and now you have to go here, and I'm able to just always attack your queen with the rook, and you have to take a repetition and make a draw. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That's very, um, very dank. So instead, king h8 is played now after rook b3. Magnus plays f3, trying to go knight f4, I guess. But now after knight f2, even if you go knight f4, because you've opened up the queen side here and the rook is on the open b lane, um, white, white is simply able to just take. And even worst case, you go like queen h6. Absolute worst case, you can go queen h6, force queens off the board, and you'll win this game as well. So we get bishop f4. Pawn to c4 now. So now white creates the lift towards the king side. The rook targets the pawn f3. We get um we get this move. Bishop takes g5, played by Magnus. Queen takes d6. Not rook takes g5, of course, because rook takes g5 walks into checkmate in one after queen h4. So queen d6. And now if black plays bishop h4, white can just take with the queen here. Rook guards the queen, and you win the game. If knight h4 here, white goes queen takes f8 check. So you can't capture the pawn with the knight or the bishop. Um, and therefore, you're completely lost. We get rook g8, rook to b8, played by Laquang Liam. And here, Magnus resigns, and with it, he resigns the match and loses the match to Laquang Liam in the uh, Oslo Esports Cup. Big shocker that Magnus loses this match. Again, though, even in this game, he had chances once he was losing um, and just wasn't able to, to find them. But I will say, to his credit, felt like Laquang Liam played very well. He stayed very stable. Sure, he kind of let the advantage slip throughout this game, but it was a very messy, complicated game. Um, but nonetheless, he found some good moves towards the end, and he, wa he was a better player, and Magnus made the final mistake, which is the reason that he lost the game. So very shocking result for Magnus to lose to Laquang, but it does, go it does go to show that's why we play the game of chess, because anything can happen.